Hello everyone, Mark91 here, aka Yugia, and uh, this video is going to be quite a long one, if I'm guessing right, because I'm going to talk about a couple of things with uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so this will be the first video in a long while of my Dungeons and Dragons D&D, not D&D, basic game, not a basic game anymore, basic game is done. Uh, my D&D journal. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, the reason I haven't recorded uh, any of these for a long while is because I'm pretty hesitant to get into the, to the camera of this, in front of the canvas of this thing, call it camera shyness. <clears throat> okay, I've got some notes here about it. Uh, yeah, first I'll talk about uh, the old, uh, about what uh, encounters and such I haven't talked about, that I should have talked about long ago, or should have made a video about long ago. Uh, yeah. So this will be of the small custom com uh, campaign I put together myself. Uh, it consisted of let's see, uh, one, two, three encounters. Though I had a lot, a bunch more planned, uh, which I'll discuss uh, after I'm done with the three first, uh, the three encounters I did eventually made make. Uh, okay, the reason those. Uh, ideas weren't used, or encounters weren't used, for us because, well, we're <coughs> we, we're going to switch to fourth edition, and basic game was 3.5 edition. And if I had uh, done the uh, the other ideas, I should have, I would have have to uh, reconstruct uh, fourth edition the statistics and such uh, back to 3.5, and that doesn't work so well. Uh, I probably will try and make uh, these ideas some into fourth edition at one point or another, but probably need with my family D and D groups because well, the enthusiasm is as uh, about as high as a dry martini. <coughs> yeah, that came out wrong. Uh, yeah, not not very enthusiastic at all, which is also one thing I will talk a bit about at the end. But for now, the three encounters that did. Uh, wait a second. Did I. Now that I think back, I believe I left the last video off. Uh, that it was still in the basic game, but they had. That they had prepared for a battle with the dragon boss. That they all set up in front of the doors. And just remembering that now, it's, if I they haven't talked about that, I'll talk about that now. It's not much. Uh, well. I could just send, uh, make it up in one uh, thing, in one sentence. Uh, they open the door, see the dragon standing there, charging to attack. Uh, but the fighter runs back because he sees a magic uh, circle on the uh, floor, which he thinks is some, some sort of summoning circle of, or something. Later on, he goes back into the uh, uh, fight. Uh, spells and attacks flying everywhere, and eventually the uh, elven wizard kills the dragon by throwing her and dra by throwing a dagger at it. <laughs> okay, um, might as well put up a bit of music because just my voice for who knows 15, 20 minutes that's just going to be boring. And that should be uh, soft enough to uh, avoid copyright uh, claims. Uh, if it isn't. Then right here, any music that's playing uh, will be playing during this video. Uh, the copyrights belong to their respectful owners, though probably someone will hound me for this. <coughs> okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, the campaign was. Uh, I had a small title for the campaign named uh, "Tusen Mauk's Return." Tusen Mauk is the dragon from the basic game who's behind everything. At, at the end he died, so the only way he could really return was as an undead, which I had planned. Uh, the first encounter was back at the beginning at, of the uh, basic game, the entrance. But uh, this time the group had a half-elf uh, ranger along, which I made, Kiara. Uh, who was ex also exploring uh, Tushin Mauk's old dungeon for some reason. Uh, so yeah, they find the entrance, start looking around a bit, kill some goblins, and eventually a, a short uh, 
eventually they find a hidden chamber behind, uh, yeah, behind a wall. And they find a small uh, corridor about eight feet across. I had a little plan for that, but uh, that's kind of dropped dead. A uh, short uh, hallway uh, lit by a candle uh, at the Already, this is why I don't really like making these videos. I just keep stumbling upon my words. Well, simply said, uh, it's a small, it's a small corridor cut out of stone. There are two candle holders hanging from the ceiling. The uh, kind of like a kind of like a dish like this, but chained to the uh, ceiling by a couple of chains at one point. Well, the first uh, one of them is lit, but he has a candle in it and is lit, uh, giving off light. But the second doesn't give off any light at all. And at the end of the small corridor, they come across a uh, <coughs> they come across uh, a door with a glass window in it, a dark glass window, uh, with a special uh, with a special lock, so they can't pick it. So this they figured out pretty quickly. Yeah, the, well, although they didn't really figure it out, they tried it, yeah, they kind of came, uh, stumbled across it. Because they, uh, at first they couldn't examine the door thoroughly, uh, well, they, they couldn't make a, a good examination of the door because it was dark. Yeah, it was just out, to, well, it was quite outside the light of the first candle. So they got the idea to take the candle out of the first uh, holder and use it to light the candle in the other holder. But whilst they're doing that, they find that there's a key laying in the second candle holder. So now they also have the key to the door. But before they do that, they you know, peek through the window to see what's in, to get a bit of an idea of what's inside. And they see one silhouette you know, standing to the left of the room. And they see one big silhouette lying in, you know, on a table or something to the right, you know, right side of the room. Uh, they didn't listen at the door, but if they had, I would have said that they didn't hear anything, no matter how high they rolled. So they open the door and enter, but it... it <coughs> sorry about that. So they enter uh, the room, which is completely dark from the inside, uh, except for a small... Well, uh, oh no, the candle... Yes, there was a candle in the left side of the corner, which was lit. And it, they find out that that first silhouette they saw to the left was actually a skeleton that was hosted up like a, a skeleton you find in biology class. Uh, but, this, um, but the thing is, it's missing its skull. Well, to the left and the right side of the door, inside the chamber, there are two unlit torches which they light using the, one of the candles. So now the entire room is lit, and they see that the you know, other silhouette they saw, the big one, that that is a dead minotaur that has been cut open. A uh, minotaur carcass, uh, like uh, that an autopsy performed on it. Uh, now, that's... <clears throat> uh, there's, uh, there's a table to the left side of the room, closer to the door and to against the wall. And there's another table right next to the, the right side of the door, against the wall. But there was at the other side. There's also behind that. There's also a bookcase and some walking space, of course. Uh, the miniature corpse was laid up on, on top of a big stone tablet, uh, which was also in the corner. Uh, I should have. I shouldn't have thrown out the the map I made out of that. So they start exploring the place. Uh, they find some uh, overpowered weapons I put in there. Uh, yeah, well, plus two longsword, plus one dagger, and something else. Uh, shouldn't have taken that because the encounter, the ambush right after that, they uh, slaughtered. <coughs> Uh, okay, they find a black mirror on to the left side of the room. Uh, it's really difficult to... I'll just draw it for a bit. Hold on a second. This is going to be tough to see in the... Probably. 
<clears throat> uh, case. Okay, here. Uh, this here is the entrance way into the chamber. This here is uh, this here is the stone stone slab where the Minotaur corpse lay. Uh, the X here was where the skeleton without a head stood. Uh, the circles were the candelier with the candle in stood. Uh, and these three bars you know, are the tables. Uh, the the two tables and the bookcase right here and it's hard to see uh, even for me on the camera but here I've drawn a line between the, it's diff between the table and the candle uh, the candelier or whatever uh, that's the m a mirror I, uh, the mirror idea I got from a ga old game called Stonekeep in which in one point you uh, find a black mirror uh, and suddenly your uh, reflection starts attacking you with lightning bolts. So yeah, they examine the mirror and it starts attacking. Uh, well, a lich starts attra attacking through it. Uh, that that lich is the, was supposed to be the villain of the campaign, but uh, I had to drop that. So yeah, they smash this mirror, gather up uh, the maids. Uh, the maids collects one shard of the mirror. Uh, I had Kira uh, collect all the other shards as she was an NPC and I kind of had her there for in case they did, couldn't figure something out uh, themselves. Uh, let me think, I had the skull of the skeleton somewhere I believe, oh yes now I remember, it was the candle in the candelier in the corner, it was a skull which was giving off light. So yeah, the fighter walks up to it, picks up the skull. Uh, and then walks over to the skeleton and starts examining it, nothing special. And then he gets the idea to put the you know, skull onto the skeleton. And then for a second it starts glowing and immediately he pulls it right off again. <laughs> yeah, I had planned for that skeleton to come alive later and come after them. As it was sort of an, supposed to be a, mis a failed experiment in necromancy. Uh, and that... Uh, it was supposed to be uh, come a smart skeleton, unlike the normal ones that you s just walk over to you and start attacking you. This one actually would have a soul trapped inside it, uh, and be smart, think, plan, and all those things. The the reason it's a failure is because it wasn't obedient, so it would have been an another NPC. And now that I really think about it, giving them two NPCs really would have been too much for uh, really would have. Uh, put them really overpowered them, and I'm thinking this is going to uh, going to go into three minutes, seeing as the, looking at the time. Uh, well, they leave the skeleton alone, start exploring a bit. Uh, they find some potions, uh, some oils, uh, the weapons I talked about. They look at the, the Minotaur corpse, and they find they check out the bookcase. And they find this one specific book that isn't as dusty as the rest. Uh, so they pull that out and suddenly the compartment to the side of them opens up. Which would have been here. Uh, within it uh, a half dead dra dragonborn paladin I had. Uh, I had a bit of a story that some uh, Tusenmauk's lair was abandoned but lately uh, people around it have been, ha had been gone missing again and the, the town the nearby town had sent uh, three people, a uh, dragonborn paladin, a uh, dwarven cleric, um, <clears throat> and a tiefling rogue to investigate, but only the uh, tiefling came back uh, heavily wounded and missing one of his horns. They found one of they found the horn, uh, the missing horn on one of the tails, but I never never got to introducing the character because I cut everything short because of 4th edition and such and well tra going over to 4th uh, edition uh, anything so yeah they find the dragon uh, the dragonborn uh, and with that they uh, start leaving the room there was also a uh, yeah there was also a book uh, one of those uh, book reading cases uh, you've probably seen them in you know, RPG games somewhere. 
if there's just a, a, stand, a wooden standard with a slope to it where people put a book on to open up and read. Uh, they found a dark blood stained book on that and when the wizard tried to open it, uh, it bit her hand. <laughs> So yeah, that also was something I had a plan for that it would that it was supposed to be the Leech's diary, but it wouldn't open until uh, unless they said his name, uh, which was Kevron, and there was a, uh, was going to be a, a connection between Kiera and Kevron, <clears throat> as that in uh, their uh, siblings. That uh, Kevron got kidnapped by some cult. I don't know which cult. I had it, I had it written down, but he was uh, kidnapped by some cults and turned into a lich after brainwashing and all that stuff. And then Kiara was you know, chasing after him, looking for him, and that's how she ended up in Tushimau's old lair. Uh, I thought that would have been quite an emotional thing, but yeah, also something that would have fought that would have fallen flat seeing as my family isn't really that enthusiastic about D&D. I think I will call them, you know, I will use these, pro I might use these characters later on if uh, I find a, uh, a real group that is enthusiastic and I get better at being, at being a dungeon master. So yeah, back to uh, the Lich's Chamber as I called it. Uh, they start leaving it, but when they get into the small the, the, the corridor, they find that there's a couple of goblins in there. Now, the thing with the corridor was that I, it was supposed to be uh, not it wasn't wide enough for two people to pass each other. So whoever went into that uh, well, two medium-sized people wouldn't have been able to get past each other. But I forgot that. So yeah, the first person who would have gone back into the corridor would have been a, practically a meat shield for the rest, unless they all just piled back out into the chamber and then went back out. So the goblins, being small uh, sized, of course, would have been able to easily go past each other. But yeah, that fell flat because I forgot that. <clears throat> okay, once they got out of that, they found an uh, uh, the rest of the patrol because they, they forgot to close the, uh, the wall that they found the, the chamber behind the corridor behind. They forgot to close that. If they had closed that, uh, then they would have run into the goblins and the uh, and the patrol, which consisted of a harpy, a minotaur, and an orc plus the two goblins from before. The goblins went into the, into the corridor to uh, uh, <clears throat> to investigate, and were supposed to be uh, surprised. Could have uh, gotten a surprise attack onto the party if they stayed into the lich in the lich's chamber for too long. So yeah, they wiped the floor with that uh, uh, with that patrol, and then I moved on to the. Well, then there's where we ended it. Uh, the next encounter wasn't much. It was the first time I tried making my own uh, with making my own traps, which was what most of the encounter was. Uh, there were, uh, and th there was one fight at the very end of it, but for most of it they were uh, dodging blades uh, coming through the ground uh, at certain uh, points. Not like uh, blades that just go uh, whoop whoop whoop, but blades that actually go you know pop up and then follow a, uh, a pass, uh, and then duck back down into the ground. Or but yeah. I had a whole, I had a room of five by five or so, uh, completely littered with those things, and to be, uh, to make it a, a bit, uh, well, it would have been easier. Uh, it could have been made easier. I put the control panel for it at the side of where the party started. Um, it was supposed to be that each of those lines of. Uh, of traps, uh, both the horizontal and vertical ones, would have uh, one blade pop up in uh, a random uh, in a random lane of it. But uh, they managed to screw up the control panel so much that they've put it in overdrive, and six blades would have went out at once. So yeah, they tried to get through and got slaughtered. I went easy on them and just let them pass through. After that, so I let them rass right next to them. I let them rest right next to them to restore them. Uh, next up, they went around the corner, 
and ran into some spire, some spear traps that you know, just went straight up through the you know, ground. Uh, each time one someone would step on one of the platforms that they were you know, one of the uh, as, uh, well in one of the spaces where the spears were, all five of the spear panels would have you know, shoot up. So if someone walked, you know, if someone st stopped in one of these spear you know, uh, straps, and uh, they would have gone hit and hit. And then if someone else uh, also stopped on one of these spear traps, uh, then he and the first one would also, you know, also get hit. <clears throat> uh, around the corner they found a loop uh, with some more spear traps and blades. Uh, they rested in a corner, then went over to um, uh, a big pair of you know, doors, uh, which they opened, found some you know, two more of those blades at the other side. Well, this time they did manage to uh, break them, well, they no, disabled them, because uh, the, the door the door was here, the, spy, and the blade traps were here, and the control panel was here on the wall, on the uh, roundabout the circle of... Uh, so they pa they go they go around the corner and they go around the corner and run into a, a minotaur and an orc and some goblins and start fighting them and right next to that is the exit of the map of the encounter. <clears throat> well, the first thing they do is cast fear or cause they call the wizard cast cause fear on the minotaur. And uh, it runs away, it, it leaves the encounter, leaving the party to uh, easily kill uh, <clears throat> easily kill the goblins, and the orcs is still hanging on a bit. Then the Minotaur returns, the, the, the wizard only got a 2 out of 4 on the roll of, uh, of Cosphere, so it would have fled for 2 rounds and then came back again 2 rounds later. Uh, so she cast Sphere... Uh, you see, cast cast fear on it again. Uh, I had them level after that, so she had two uses of it now instead of one before. Uh, so uh, this time she rolls a four uh, on a four die. So this time the uh, <coughs> this time the uh, minotaur craps its pants and runs away like a little pansy. I didn't say that really specifically, but still, <coughs> but still, that was kind of funny. Uh, so they just then they rested and left the encounter. After that, I had planned for a siege, it's like that they would enter an uh, old big dwarf in the hall, uh, sink mines of Moria where the bull, where the uh, goblins start pouring down, uh, and then the Balrog Balrog shows up. Uh, think that area sort and sort of like, but a bit more broken down, with the, the heroes at one side. And a trebuchet at the other side, and <clears throat> that would have been pretty easy, you know, pretty interesting to see them run for cover closer and closer to the trebuchet, which would have been armed with uh, a harpy, a minotaur, and an orc. The minotaur would load rocks into the trebuchet, or, or no, it wasn't the trebuchet, a catapult. The orc would hand with. Handle it with uh, pulling it back, and so that the uh, uh, well, I call it, I'll call it the spoon that it gets it pulls back and releases. That's that's what the orc would have done, and the harpy sat on top of it to the side so it wouldn't get hit by the rocks flying you know, off, you know, flying off uh, to spots uh, to spot the party and uh, coordinate where uh, well to aim the nest. You know, to aim this stupid thing, I might pour, Yeah, I might. I'm going to write all of these ideas down again, and I might revise them in fourth edition, or I might give them as uh, ideas to a uh, dungeon master, uh, the dungeon master of a group I join, because I plan to join a real group soon. More about that at the end. Uh, okay, so. Instead of the seeds, they fire, They got to a, the dwarven hall, of which I built a little model uh, in Minecraft. Uh, they come across these huge stone doors and force them open. Uh, inside, they find a dwarven hall with water flowing down the sides. Uh, I believe I did show 
uh, no. I'll look if I can, uh, I'll see if I uh, still have that world in Minecraft where I have the Dwarven Hole. And then I'll slap that at the end of this. It'll give you a good idea of how the, the place would have looked. Uh, but for now I'll just describe it. Uh, there's a central square uh, with with two uh, with two collapsed so hallways to the sides, and a staircase at the uh, a staircase going up towards where the, the the old dwarven king and queen's throne would have been. <coughs> uh, on the square, there there were there were some goblins and an orc, my bit of standard opponents which I had from basic game. And then they get closer, and there's a goblin, uh, and then, uh, there's another goblin fighting. Oh no, the, the, go the there was a goblin fighter on the square, an orc was with him, and there was a goblin archer on the heightened pl uh, spot. Because the I'm going to draw again, uh, it was sort of, well, the stairs weren't. Sort of like this. Uh, this is the stairs, uh, if I can think. And these side areas were heightened at the same uh, height as the end of the stairs, so they were just uh, about ten feet higher than uh, whatever was uh, whatever was here, uh, ten feet above the square. So the arch, the goblin archer had a uh, good advantage there. Uh, so yeah, they. The party takes out the orc and the goblin warrior, and then start uh, get start. Then they start climbing the stairs to attack the goblin, but uh, they also spot a huge minotaur sitting on the destroyer's throne, and it were they made he, he kind of made it into a couch. They just you know, took the he just took his axe to the uh, the dwarf and from the queen and king's you know, throne, you know, which would have been placed right next to each other. A little difference. He just Cut it off, made it like uh, into a stone couch, big enough to fit his ass. <clears throat> because I made him like uh, 15 feet tall. And now they quickly take. Uh, they they don't approach the, the Minotaur yet. Uh, they they just climb from the stairs onto the heightened areas to get uh, to get at the, the Goblin Archer. And then they approach uh, the goblin. Uh, then, uh, then they approach the Minotaur King. In the basic game, there was notice of a Minotaur King, uh, <clears throat> uh, but it wasn't used. So I used that idea for uh, a big ass Minotaur, and that the Minotaur fought in the basic game was his son. So he was pretty pissed off at the party. So pissed off, he accidentally left left his battle axe onto the throne. Shouldn't have done that because they killed him decently easy with some hints from me. So uh, he stands up, uh, pretty pissed off at uh, the group. He's looking up at this 15 feet long Minotaur. Uh, I, I should have had, I should have made them roll uh, wheel saves and fortitude saves to see if they panic and piss their pants. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> the Minotaur. Uh, uh, king speak you know, gives a little speech angrily, declaring he is the Minotaur King, and they slew his son. And they they saw from their reaction, they thought that was a pretty nice idea from me. That the, the Minotaur they killed in basic game was the son of this dude. So yeah, then the fight starts. I had given the Minotaur King 100 hit points, uh, <clears throat> and which they, which they were quite quite surprised to, but uh, they. They lure and drag. They, they no. He went after someone. I'm not sure who he went after, but they ended up in the, in one of the heightened areas here. I just want to be specific, and the, I believe it was the cleric was driven into a corner there by the Minotaur King. The rest of the party was standing uh, a bit around him, and. The the fighter got kicked down the stairs, <laughs> so and he lay he lay there for quite some time because he just couldn't get a uh, saving throw to get up. I took that from fourth edition. Uh, saving throws to get up. He just kept getting fives, ones, twos, uh, and the such. And then I drop a bit of a hint that they might push him off the heightened area for fall damage. Now. Uh, 
there was you know, right after the drop and there wasn't there there wasn't directly a uh, floor there was uh, a water channel that I had running around the place and that ran ar uh, around the square but lower about uh, five feet or so so if they the I kind of got the ideas of uh, using their the I kind of gave them hints of using their environment so they s decide to push the mini you know, torquing off the sides uh, to a 15 feet drop not much you may think but uh, there was you know, there was the, the the square which was above the water side but there was quite some distance so they uh, they pulled together and push him off. The fighter's still you know, rolling around at the bottom of the stairs trying to get up. <clears throat> so they push him off together, the, the rogue, the mage, and the cleric. Uh, the cleric almost got kicked off himself. So they push him off and he falls down and breaks his neck on the edge of the square, of the heightened square part. So yeah, he, the, 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 the Minotaur King is lying paralyzed inside the wa in the water. Well, not well, any seriously wounded, you know, practically not well, near death even. And then the rogue gets the smart idea to jump, uh, to jump on it with his blade down. So he jumps on it like a lens of solid, like, yup! and he peels, you know, runs his blade straight through his skull. And then the rotter starts you know, running rats down it. Uh, he's well, I. Yes, yeah, so I had him take a bit of fall damage because it was still a ten foot, uh, quite a, a bit of a drop. Uh, every ten feet you, you drop with uh, D and D is about one is uh, one D. It's a one D ten roll of damage. So I had him take that uh, uh, halved because the Minotaur King sort of cushioned his fall. So yeah, and that was the end of the encounter. I had, for the true ending of, my original idea of the ending of the campaign would have been a standoff with Catherine, the half-elf lich, uh, brother to Kiara. Oh yeah, Kiara, I forgot about her. Uh, <laughs> that's another good sign that you forget your own character. Yeah, she also helped in the fight. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, the rich, my. The original idea was a fight between Kavron and Kiara, whilst the rest of the uh, group would have to deal with uh, an undead, a resurrected uh, Toastmouth in an undead Draco Lich form. But I couldn't get any statistics for that. And I couldn't find any or make any. I only had the player's handbook, so I didn't know anything about undead statistics. <clears throat> well, not. I a bit from the basic game, but that was only with zombies and skeletons, not really Draco Liches. And that was the end of that, and that was practically the last time we went, to, we were together. Well, it was the last time we had a campaign with. We had an encounter using stuff from the dungeon, uh, from the basic game. Uh, recently, about a month ago or so, or maybe even one and a half or two. We had a bit of a start with uh, the with <clears throat> uh, with the, the with the campaign in the back of the fourth edition Dungeon Master book, where, where they had, but it, there wasn't much that happened. They were in. I'm just keep falling off my words, so I'm going to end this here. I'm going to look up if I still have that world in Minecraft and make should give a short tour, uh, look around of. Uh, the Dwarven Hall, slap that to the end of this, um, and <clears throat> and then uh, I'll record some the other part of this after I'm you know, done stumbling over my words. So thank you for watching, uh, I hope this was sort of enjoyable, even though it's half an hour long, well over half an hour long, add another five, two, three, five minutes with the, the Dwarven Hall to it, get to 40. Yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, until next time, but until then, have a nice day and goodbye.